I'm going to invite um, all of our speakers who are going to be a part of our day to join me this morning. I'm Sue Haig, and I'm the president of Twin Cities Habitat for Humanity, and I cannot tell you how excited I am to be here today uh, for this wonderful groundbreaking uh, at this beautiful location in St. Paul, Minnesota at Pryor and University Avenue, right on the Green Line, the Central Quarter. So uh, this is a great day and a new beginning for Twin Cities Habitat for Humanity. You know, um, we began in 1985. Uh, we had, uh, we're in a church basement, and we built our first home there. And we built it for a wonderful woman named Lily Priscina. And I'm happy to tell you that uh, Lily has paid off her mortgage, has two kids, two grandkids, and she still lives in her home. So, um, and as we are here today breaking ground at Twin Cities Habitat for Humanity for our new home, we are also breaking ground for a new home in North Minneapolis. It will be the 1,000th home that Habitat builds in the Twin Cities. So, from one home in 1985 um, to a thousand homes, and what excites me about what we're doing here is that there will literally be thousands of families, uh, thousands of volunteers who will come here, who will gather here to continue to celebrate and grow this mission so we can serve more families. Um, many things are the same at Habitat. Families still build their homes with sweat equity. We still partner with neighborhoods to make sure that that design fits into the home, into their neighborhood, just like we are with this neighborhood. We want to make sure that this is a great addition to this neighborhood in St. Paul and will really contribute to the vitality of this city. But some things are different. That new home that we're building in North Minneapolis, a net zero energy home, it's gonna have solar panels on it. We did not do that in 1985. Uh, and so we're always improving and trying and growing new ways to make it more cost effective for families to be homeowners. Because we know that families who live in homes will have stable families, They'll have healthy families and their kids are going to do great at school. And that's what this mission is about. So we have so many people to uh, thank today. And I'm going to invite our speakers to come on up. Norm Baer, uh, who is a chair of our board. Come on up, Norm. Um, and Norm with his wife, Kathy. And then Mary Lynn and Warren Staley um, uh, made lead gifts uh, for this facility. We would not be there without him, but really, Every board member at Twin Cities Habitat for Humanity has made a pledge or a gift to this new building. So could you raise your hand so we can thank you all. There are many great board members here. We have two other uh, special uh, people I want to point out. Um, two former board members, Tanya Bell, Mike Nordstrom, co-chairs of this facility committee who have been working with us on this project since 2009. <laughs> um, so Tanya and Mike, uh, and actually we have so many members of our facility committee uh, who have helped give us the confidence and the professional and technical skills to accomplish what we're beginning here today. So a big thank you to our facility committee. I also want to thank our wonderful financial partners, uh, Sunrise Banks. Where's Rick? Rick Beeson. Uh, Rick is a, a SVP for commercial banking for Sunrise Banks. They're one of our partners on our new market tax credit financing. Um, and then I also want to point out Phil Trier from U.S. Bank, our other great financial partner here. Thank you, Phil. And um, I don't know if Sally Schlossberg is here. Is Sally here? I am so sorry she isn't here. She is a volunteer who's been an internal project management coordinator who I think everyone thinks is actually a full-time employee at Habitat, so I'm sorry she's not here. Um, and then a particular thank you to um, our lead for this project is Mary Schumacher. Um, Mary is our chief operating officer in an organization like a Habitat, that means you are the chief cook and bottle washer at all things. And 
and uh, particularly uh, assisted us with the uh, really interesting but complex work of financing this project. So uh, a great thank you to her. And then finally, we have a wonderful project manager over there, Dave Bergstrom uh, from Wellington Management. And uh, he is uh, just a pleasure to work with. And um, our wonderful architects from Gensler. Oh, there they are. Uh, how are you? Thank you, guys. Bill and Betsy, um, who have just, you know, I think you're going to be so excited when you see this building when it's built because it really captures the spirit of this mission and the spirit of our organization. And it's just been a pleasure to work with them. Um, I also want to thank our wonderful general contractor, McGough. I don't know where the McGough people are. Oh. He's got the uh, hard hat on, and uh, they have been a wonderful partner to us up to this point. Just a pleasure to work with them, and uh, we are so looking forward to seeing this building complete. And then, um, in addition to our mayor, uh, Chris Coleman, I also want to introduce uh, City Council Member um, Chris Tolbert, who is here. Chris, where are you? And uh, City Council Member Russ Stark, who represents this neighborhood. I'm going to invite up Mayor Chris Coleman to say a few words. Uh, welcome, everyone. What a great, uh, great day. Last week, Russ and I were at a groundbreaking just down the street for a $45 million expansion of Episcopal Homes. Uh, luckily, we've, I think, just about thawed out from that experience. That was, uh, I, we're so happy. It's not a lot warmer, but it's just enough warmer to, uh, today to uh, to enjoy this. They're, the ducks were actually, uh, that were on the pond, were actually flying south last week. They were, they were going back home. Uh, this is really a remarkable project, and I think a remarkable day in what will be a long-term development of the Central Core. When we started off a long time ago uh, dreaming about a great transit system along this corridor, we knew it was an important vehicle to transport folks from uh, the, our two downtowns to the University of Minnesota campuses, to the state capitol complex, and all the hospitals and the businesses along the corridor. But we also knew that it was going to be a critical piece of the redevelopment of the central portion of our city. That it was going to be the, the thing that spurred development so that all kinds of uses, whether it was a nonprofit use like Habitat, whether it was senior housing uh, that we broke ground on yesterday or last week at Episcopal Homes, or new businesses and new opportunities, the Chittenden Eastman building, all along this corridor, uh, we are exploding with construction, with projects, with revisioning, with repurposing everything that we're doing. And to think, that that is probably 14 months or at least maybe a year before the line actually gets uh, operational. So I, we're so excited to see this. This beautiful design of this facility uh, is, uh, I think, going to be adds so much to this corridor. And I think it's going to set a standard. I think it's going to set a really high bar to say that there are going to be first-class projects all along this corridor that are going to serve many, many needs. And there is no more important need that we serve than the work that Habitat does. Whether it's the thousand homes that have been built uh, or the countless thousands of lives that have been changed, we know that the work that Habitat does is central to the mission in the city of St. Paul, in the Twin Cities, to make sure that all of our families live in dignity, all of our children have the opportunity and the resources that they need to be, uh, to be successful, uh, and that we just, as a community, step forward and say, we are going to take care of all of those in need, and we're going to do it in a way that I think can't be matched anywhere else in this country or on the globe. We're so fortunate to have so many great partners, many of you that are here today. Uh, I have my uh, chief of staff, Erin Dady, who's a board member of Habitat. I want to know how big of a contribution she gave. <laughs> Well, I'll go back and check on that. <laughs> Paul Williams, uh, my, my deputy mayor, whose life work has been going around and helping rebuild uh, communities across this country, and now we're blessed to have him doing that in the city of St. Paul. And then we have great folks like the Staley's who, you know, could be happily uh, in warmer climes, uh, <laughs> that wouldn't have to be here doing this. But the fact of the matter is, they are an expression of the greatness of this community. People wonder, you know, is it really all important that you have, you know, so many Fortune 500 companies and these great success? It is because when you have, when you have more in Maryland that are willing to give of their time in addition to all their other duties, to not only you know go to board meetings, but to be on site building. Uh, I got to do some painting with them a couple of years ago over on the east side, uh, and they were getting dirty just with the rest of us. Uh, and, it, and it was really special, and I just want to thank them. I want to thank Sue for her leadership, and I want to thank all of you 
for making uh, this very, very important day uh, come to uh, come to pass. Uh, it is not the end. It is not the. It, it is not uh, what it was Churchill's quote of D-Day. Uh, this is the uh, the end of the beginning in terms of the transformation of this community. Uh, and I really appreciate all of you that have played a role. Thank you very much. Well, I also want to um, give our board chair, Norm Baer, um, a, a few moments to speak because really it is about um, the commitment and the leadership of the board of Habitat that we are even possibly here today. So Norm, come on up. You know, before I uh, join with Sue and thanking everyone, I want to point out uh, why we do what we do. Uh, it was ironic uh, when I got up this morning. I'm not sure I can bring this paper on this side of the street, but <laughs> it was ironic that the headline in the strip this morning was racial housing gap is worse than the nation. Uh, we do what we do at Habitat because that's a problem that's got to be fixed. And by fixing it, we solve not only the problem for the people that are suffering from that, but we solve the problem for each of us that wants to improve our community. So that's really why I do what I do, and I know that's why Sue does what she does, and the Staley's do what they do, and all of you do what you do, uh, and I thank you for doing that. It is a testament to the compassion of this community that individuals, corporations, and foundations came together to support the creation of this much needed new home for Habitat. Thanks to their generosity, no money or resources had to come out of our operating budget. This isn't being built out of Habitat mission dollars. The mission goes on stronger than ever because we're building this. Our generous supporters include all of these folks. Cargill, Target, the McKnight Foundation, the St. Paul Foundation, the Catherine B. Anderson Fund of the St. Paul Foundation, the Wells Fargo Foundation of Minnesota, Richard and Teresa Davis, and the Family Housing Foundation, as well as numerous individuals. Because of these gifts from these groups and many more, Twin Cities Habitat will move into its new home next spring, stronger than ever, and better prepared for the mission of eliminating poverty housing. I ask you to join me in applauding the long-term vision that is being shown, has been shown, and will be shown by all of those who have decided that an investment in stable housing and strong families is money well spent. That's what we're about. And now I'd like to invite up uh, Mary Lynn and Warren Staley, um, who have been so instrumental uh, in this work, for this uh, work at this new facility, but really for our whole goal of our New World of Hope campaign. Uh, and we're almost there. We've almost achieved that goal. But I want to invite you up to talk about what we're doing today. Thank you. The next time you give someone a high five or you see a high five, I want you to think back to this place and this time, and I want you to think of these five things. First of all, that this home for Habitat is an investment. It's an investment in families and neighborhoods, an investment in our community that will go on much farther than today to the years to come. And secondly, I want you to think of the people that come here. Truly, in this home, they will see, they will receive their keys literally and figuratively to a brighter future. Here they will pay sweat equity, they will go through their homeowner training, they will sign their closing papers. When a family buys a Habitat home they, and pays a Habitat mortgage, they are allowing Habitat to build more affordable homes for the future. And that Twin Cities Habitat is a cycle of empowerment. Empowerment. And it will only get stronger as the years come in this home. So that's four. And the fifth 
is all of the people who have worked to make this possible. The homeowners who had a bigger dream, the board and the Habitat staff that worked every day making this come, the, the financiers, the community, both St. Paul and Minneapolis. That's a high five in anyone's language. So give yourselves a high five and remember this day. <laughs> to our neighborhood and I am so happy to be in this neighborhood here in St. Paul uh, and I really want to invite up Councilmember Russ Stark to uh, say a few things about the neighborhood and um, kind of welcome us. Thank you Sue. It's great to be here today and congratulations to Habitat and all of the partners who have uh, brought this day to, uh, to fruition. Thank you so much for all of your work. You know, uh, 12 years ago or so, I actually started working right here on this site uh, in the building that used to stand here. And I used to walk from home about a mile away pretty much every day. And as I, I actually did the same this morning. And as I walked down here, I was thinking about everything that's already changed in that 12 years along this avenue and thinking about how this project is really the next step in that, um, in that evolution of this community and this street from a place that was frankly pretty disinvested in, pretty forgotten about, to a place that's in the middle of everything. And I want to thank Sue and the board and all the partners here today for helping make that happen. Thank you very much. Well, and this has really been an exciting project for us because, um, and I don't know, Mayor, how many times this happens, but this is a, a $9.5 million investment at this location. Very few public funds here, uh, probably less than $100,000. Um, and so that means it's all, all private investment here in this city. Um, which is really remarkable. And we have two great um, investors that we've been working with, um, Sunrise Banks. Rick Beeson, come on up. Thanks very much, Sue. Uh, on behalf of our owners, the uh, Ryling family of St. Paul, all our employees, we're really honored to have worked with you on, on this project with our partner, U.S. Bank. Um, it is a uh, it is a great project. Uh, I hear a train leaving downtown, and I, trains left the station both both literally and figuratively. Um, it's a great day for St. Paul, a great day for Habitat, great day for University Avenue. This building will be transformative, visually, uh, symbolically, and uh, and in other ways. So. Um, uh, I just, again, would love to thank you for the work, uh, for giving us the work, um, and um, um, go Habitat. Our other uh, great uh, financial partner in this project is U.S. Bank, and they've been a terrific partner to us, and I want to invite up Phil Trer. Thank you, Sue. It's really a pleasure to be here to have a small part in this project. We're closely with Rick and Sunrise. U.S. Bank is so proud of its long-standing partnership with Twin Cities Habitat for Humanity. I mean, it's really an honor to be affiliated with, with such a great organization that has impacted so many lives across this community. And whether it's playing a small part in the financing or it's deploying hundreds of U.S. Bank employees every summer as part of the Brush with Kindness program, we are dedicated to supporting this organization. We are dedicated to this community. And on behalf of U.S. Bank, Thanks, Sue. Congratulations to you, the entire staff, to the board of directors. It's organizations like yours that make this community a great place to work, to visit, and a great place to call home. So thank you.